Hi, my name is Zach Riley, and over the next few videos, we're going to discuss regenerative agriculture. Regenerative agriculture is not a new concept. In fact, many people refer to it as just good old fashioned farming. However, it's a way of farming that puts soil health at the core of farm management. In this video, we're going to explore ways to maximize crop diversity on farm. In a natural ecosystem, it's extremely unusual to find a monoculture. However, in farming, it's common practice. Crop diversity or diversity of plants above ground leads to diversity of soil biology. And this ultimately leads to increased resilience on farm. Although there's many ways to increase crop diversity, such as intercropping, relay cropping or cover crops, often the most straightforward way is to alter the rotation to include a variety of different species. We went to visit Hugh Black at Backbooth, who's been doing just this. Hugh is a farmer in the Farming for a Better Climate Soil Regenerative Group, and he's been tweaking his rotation to include different plant species to maximise crop diversity and below ground resilience. Hi there, I'm Hugh Black. We're farming in Kamaili and Angus. We grow here potatoes, cereals, which are wheat, oats, and then we have oilseed rape and beans. Something we're doing slightly differently here at Batbooth is uh, we've expanded our rotation further from the previous six year setting to just a seven years uh, rotation. Uh, we base it around the potatoes, so we've shifted it to a seven year rotation uh, with six clear years for potatoes. But when doing that, we created a, uh, a scenario where we had second cereals too often. So we've changed the rotation uh, and brought in spring beans and winter beans to add to our um, species mix. Having a legume in is something we've not had in before, so we're hoping to get strong results from the legumes. And with a seven year rotation, we hope that each crop has its best chance to thrive with healthier soils without having too much buildup from being in close succession to each other. So the rotation uh, is, is been simplified now. We've managed to set it in stone, uh, almost depending on the weather if we get a bad winter, but we start everything around the potato and it's based around the PCN health of the soil and trying to reduce that by keeping a wide rotation. My ideal would be 10 years or more, but we can't get there yet. We start with the potatoes and then after the potatoes, we follow the wheat crop, winter wheat. The wheat is followed by oats, generally winter oats, which gives us an earlier entry for our oilseed rape. The oilseed rape gives us a nice early entry for our winter wheat crop again, which is the second wheat crop in the rotation. That wheat crop is then followed by spring or winter beans. That again gives us a nice entry with nice land for the third wheat crop in the rotation before we return back to the start into potato crops. With the change of going from our seven, six year rotation to seven year rotation, we're finding that uh, the main benefits that we're pushing for to achieve are actually the crop diversity within the, within the full rotation. Um, before in our six year rotation, we'd often have two cereal crops back to back, whether it be wheat and spring barley or spring barley, spring barley. By changing the rotation and bringing in the new legume to our farm, we are totally breaking the cycle from white crop to green crop, white crop to green crop. Um, that, for me, gives us an improvement in, in pest management, should, I hope, reduce it. Um, it should also help the weed burden, which is easily built up nowadays. And the whole cycle, to me, seems a bit more logical, having broken it up and uh, creating more diversity with different species throughout the rotation. Yes, we have the three wheats, but they're always separated. We never do a back-to-back -back wheat crop. In, in changing our rotation, the main challenges we found uh, were firstly growing a crop we hadn't grown before, uh, the bean. Uh, we, do, we started in spring beans and actually found them very simple to grow. Um, weed control would be one of the main issues at the very start, um, but we think we've overcome that now, after year two, year one. But we have found uh, a, a new marketplace for ourselves to, to tap into. Uh, the bean market is quite fickle and small, um, there's a lot of people who would like to use the bean, but they don't seem to want to change their rations for small quantities in the, in the livestock sector. We're aiming for a seed, a seed bean to start with, the high-end uh, contracts, 
and then if we don't achieve that, we try and aim for the human consumption market. Uh, again, if we don't achieve that for quality, we come back to the baseline, which is the livestock feed market. It's always been available. It's just a, a smaller movement of product and a bit more fickle to find a market price. Having introduced the, the new rotation to the farm, we have found, and it may be just coincidence of good summers, but we do feel that the soil structures are, are, are improving. They seem to be more uh, uh, flexible. Uh, they seem to cope in better, they seem to cope better in, in poor conditions. Um, and by elongating that rotation, even by one year, and having the different species brought in mid midway, when we come back around to the potato crop, having had a full six years out of heavy, difficult uh, soil handling, we are finding that the soil's in lovely condition again and recovering quite well. The bean leaves a very soft, loamy soil after, after it's harvested. Whether we ploughed it or whether we direct drill it, it does leave a very nice velvety finish and it feels like a great start for a wheat crop going in. With the potatoes being the most invasive crop and being lots of cultivations to establish and harvest, it definitely is the point where the damage is all starting in our rotation. But having the different species doing different rooting structures and different actions in the soil, we feel it can only be helping to recover the soil faster. A bit like a hangover after a night out. We want to get back to where we wanted to be on the Monday morning as fast as we can. And we feel that although the potatoes are very critical to the business's income, we still need to look after the soil for the rest of the rotation. And having this mix of crops, we feel really is helping. And measuring it is difficult, but we do, our drivers and our operators are finding conditions are improving steadily all the time. For those that are thinking of changing their rotation, I would certainly test the, test the market and speak to the market before entering with a crop and try and make sure you get the right value from day one. Uh, I had a lot of talks with bean buyers and bean sellers just to establish where my feet were going to land in the market. Uh, that gave me confidence when I established the crop that, and when I harvested it, I had somewhere to sell it to properly and not be a very weak seller. Uh, what my intentions were with beans aren't what we're doing now, purely because the market is quite fickle, but very doable. Other things I would definitely test for my own confidence is to know that in these poor years of weather uh, we can establish the crops properly, making sure equipment is suitable for these crops. We managed not to buy any new equipment for changing our rotation. Everything was done in-house. Our team are fully versed with what we're doing and it's a very simple change but does have a big effect on, on the business planning and the, the, the output of the business. Uh, so we, we were quite happy with how it's gone but um, there's still challenges to be conquered.